Hello everyone. I am Dr. N. S. Rivatsan, Associate Professor of Electrical and Electronics Engineering Department of R M D Engineering College. Here we are going to discuss about one of the important papers, which is called Microprocessor and Microcontroller for Fifth Semester Triple E students. In this session, we are going to discuss about the basics of eight zero eight five processor as well as architecture of eight zero eight five processor. as we mentioned this is for the fifth semester triple e students subject code is e8551 microprocessor and microcontroller this is one of the building block or building blocks of paper for designing an embedded system uh, so that they can understand the basics of processors and microcontrollers to build uh, applications based on these these kind of systems and then developing a embedded system now quickly move on to the 8085 processor the features of 8085 processor this is a very very fundamental processor if a, if a student wants to understand they have to study the fundamental of 8085 processor which will give them the basic understanding of how the processor works 8085 processor is a 8 bit processor which can have 8 bits of data and it can process that 8 bits of data and it is manufactured with nmos technology and it has got 16 bit address bus that means it can load up to 2 power 16 that is 65 536 bytes or 64 kilobytes of memory which you can address to so 64 kilobytes of memory location through separate pins of a0 to a15 out of which a0 ad0 to ad7 that is the lower order address is multiplex and it has got exclusive address lines for higher order that is a8 to a15 the first eight as i mentioned to you the first eight lines of address bus and eight lines of data bus or multiplex which is ad0 to ad7 which is a multiplex to one initially it lacked like address bus later it will be used as a data bus data bus is a group of eight lines from d0 to d7 it supports external interrupt request as well and it has got a 16 bit program counter program counter is a register which stores the address of the next instruction to be executed and it has also contain 16 bit stack pointer which is useful for all kinds of stack operations and it has got eight general purpose register pass like bc de hl and of course there are two temporary registers which are not available for the user w and z and it operates with a 5 volt power supply and the operating frequency of 8085 processor is 3.2 megahertz and it comes in a 40 pin dual inline package or dip package now let us focus on to the architecture of 8085 processor which was the basic of this video 8085 architecture architecture represents the the graphical as well as the planar orientation of all the components which are part of the processor since it's a processor there is going to be a arithmetic and logic unit which operates as a brain of the processor so arithmetic and logic unit is the fundamental unit of any processor which performs all the arithmetical and logical operation as you can see there is a alu and it contains eight registers which can be paired which are called as dc d e hl and they are eight bit in length and they can club together in the same sequence as b e bc pair d e pair and hl pair and forms a 16 bit registers registers which are used for during the program and for all the data movement as well as the conversion process uh, for for writing the coding as well as for doing the required task and the registers are very very useful and they are general purpose in nature and we know there is a program counter which is a 16 bit register which points to the address memory address and it points to the address of the next instruction to be executed that is called program counter and we got a, a stack pointer a stack pointer points to the top of the stack which is used for all the stack related operations and we do have a increment slash decrement at Incrementer slash decrementer as well as address slash, and as we know, eight zero eight five processor is a 
8 bit processor but it has got a 16 bit address line out of which 8 bit 8 bit address lines are multiplex you can see which is called as address come data bus this address come data bus is a multiplex bus where it is having a line of ad0 to ad7 initially it will act like address bus with the signal a0 to a7 which is called as a lower order address bus lower order address or which carries a lower order address bus and when the signal called as ad there is address latch enable signal will be there which will ensure the lines which are used are address lines and once the address is loaded onto the system and the higher order address is also equally loaded that is a8 to a15 now the program counter will point to the memory and it can load the or to and fro from the memory or to the processor or to the io device now then after which uh, this d0 d7 will become like a address a data bus instead of address bus and we have accumulator accumulator is a register it's a it's a register and all the operations are performed with respect to the accumulator so whatever be the operation which has been performed logically or arithmetically that will be done with respect to the accumulator for example when we give us command like add b the content of b register is added with a register which is a mathematical operation of addition and the result of which will be stored in the accumulator itself so accumulator is also one of the register it's a special purpose register we can think of and because it is going to involve in all kinds of operation even for when you want to move the data to the external device using an instruction call out or if you want to get the data from the external device through in instruction in those conditions also it is accumulator is involved directly we have a temporary register which are all accessible by the alu and it is not available for the user and we got a flag register we got sign flag zero flag auxiliary carry flag parity flag all these flags are useful uh, when when we want to do the logical operation as well as mathematical operation we have instruction register which loads the instruction or the opcode for the instruction will be loaded on to the instruction register and that is passed on to the instruction decoder and machine cycle encoding and this will convert that opcode operation code into the required and it decodes and performs a required control operation with the help of timing and control signal now we will focus on to the timing and control signal timing and control signal provides all the necessary timing and control signal for the processor to do the required task x1 x2 are basically the clock generator which is connected to the crystal oscillator and a clock out is a signal where if the processor want to give the pulse to the external device or any other output device which will be given through clock out signal and ready is a signal where the external device is ready for data transmission or for the uh, bulk data transfer it is given through ready and a read bar or write bar or the signal where which is used for read and write operation and as i already mentioned to you ale is address latch enable which will be working in tandem with the multiplex address come data bus initially when ale is high because it is activated upon active high signal when it is high the address come data bus which is a multiplex bus will become like a address bus and when ale signal goes low it becomes a data bus so we can use effective use of pins as well as effective use of resource of the processor with the help of ale signal along with ad0 and ad7 signals as well s0 s1 refers to the status signal and which represents the type of operation being performed if if uh, s0 s1 is 11 which is a basically opcode fetch where the program counter points to the memory from there the opcode is fetched and it is loaded onto the instruction register and that is called as opcode fetch operation code what operation needs to be performed that is fetched with the help of signal 11 and suppose if the signal is 10 which is a basically a read operation so the data which is read from the processor loaded on to the opcode is loaded on to the instruction register the opcode is uh, is uh, is read during the memory operation say or it could be a, a io read operation as well if it is 01 which is basically a write operation and a write operation means the data is written on to the processor and uh, 00 is a halt operation so based on the status signal we will be able to do all kinds of controlling operation with respect to the processor is concerned 
and we got something called as io slash mbar here which is basically the kind of data or the transfer which is happening if io slash mbar is one which is active high it connects to the input output device if io slash mbar is zero which means it is connect to the memory so this is status signal s0 s1 io slash mbar will operate in tandem if it is one and status signal is one zero it is a io read operation because io is one because it is i input output device and one zero means read operation so it is io read operation so like that these signals will work in tandem hold is a request to the processor to do a uh, to you make use of the processor resources so the external device may uh, want to use the address and data bus and control bus effectively and it is request the processor for bulk data transfer using the hold signal and the processor acknowledges using the hold acknowledgement and we got reset in in order to reset the processor we will be using a signal called reset in similarly the external device can be reset with the help of reset out signal so these were the some of the signals which are present in the timing and control which are all very very essential for the processor to ensure all the operations are performed uniquely and we have a interrupt controller here which is interrupt is a request to the processor to do a subroutine task we have different types of interrupts the basic interrupts is interrupt request and the processor acknowledges the external device or the io device through the acknowledgement signal which is called inta bar which is called as active low and we got a variety of uh, interrupt signals which are having a hierarchy or which is can be masked or unmasked they are called as maskable interrupts which are all called as rst 5.5 6.5 and 7.5 which are all variable in hierarchy is concerned rst is 5.5 is a lower hierarchy compared to 6.5 and uh, 6.5 is lower hierarchy compared to 7.5 all these interrupts can be maskable which means they can be enabled or disabled with the instruction called as ei which means enable interrupt which can be disabled using the dei signal which is called disable interrupt there is one signal which is non maskable which is called as a trap trap is a highest priority kind of interrupt where which cannot be masked so trap is a highest priority interrupt request signal and which can be used for some emergency operations and we also have a signal for serial input data and serial output data which are all used for serial communication and this this transfer data one bit at a time and serial control is uh, controlled with the help of these two signals serial input data and serial output data so these were the basic architecture of 8085 i hope it was very interesting and you are able to learn lot of things in the short span of time i hope uh, the video is useful and understandable and looking forward to a uh, lot more videos so that it is make more sense and uh, able to understand right thanks for the thanks for watching